Good morning, good people. Welcome to Vlogmas Day 9. So I'm giving all of the <laughs> Where's Waldo vibes today, but today's video is going to be kind of a more chill, spend the day with me, work with me kind of vlog situation. It took me a little while to get going this morning. It's already 10-11 and i need to run to target before i hop on zoom for the rest of the day a lot of my afternoon is going to be zoom calls but i really do want to start the process of getting ready to christmatize and decorate the apartment and i've been looking online at decorations and i am appalled at the price of christmas decorations <laughs> has it always been this bad i keep asking my parents like how did you guys deck the halls and give us gifts and like we didn't die because everything is so expensive but i think i finally found a tree that i like enough and i'm going to order but i want to run to target this morning before my workday starts just to see if they have like garland or tinsel or some little things i can put out like on the coffee table on my bookshelves i know i want my colors to be white and gold for everything and i also need to find christmas tree ornaments in that color scheme maybe some pops of red but i'm really dedicated to the white and the gold that's going to be today's plan we're going to shop for christmas decorations we're going to get some work done and i want to start um thinking about my 2021 goals so i'm going to show you all of this later but i bought the power sheets goal planner and i want to start going through some of the early sections of that and just thinking what i want my goals to be doing some brainstorming and i will flip through the whole planner because it's really amazing i've used the power sheets before but they've revamped the entire thing and it's really 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 good so that's the plan for today i hope you all are doing well and let's i haven't known like the actual date or day of the week since like the fourth day of vlogmas but let's go kill this tuesday <laughs> being very slim pickings which I didn't think there would be a ton it's a smaller target but I thought there would be more than what I found but at least now I know what I need to order online so I got these white little mini trees I figured I could do like one on my shelf one on the coffee table I prefer to have a smaller one on the coffee table because this will probably block the TV but you just fluff them out till it looks less like a magic wand more like a christmas tree figure like i said one on the bookshelf maybe one on the coffee bar i do want to put some like cute little bits and bobs on the coffee bar and make that a super cute moment so i might end up going and grabbing one more of these they were running low so i should probably go back sooner rather than later but these were cute and then the only other thing i found that was worth picking up was this little ornament set i figure it was in the colors that i wanted the star is silver but that's fine um i could always either use it someplace else or get a different star i could even put this little star like this one on one of these trees if i really wanted to it looks like it comes on a um hair clip which is a choice but i thought these ornaments were really cute super easy i like that they're stored in a little something i don't want to get a ton of stuff because i don't have a ton of storage space but I'm sorry if you guys can hear Charles and Camilla in the background doing what they do best but um, I do want to obviously have ornaments on my tree so this is a good start but I'm just gonna order 
the rest of the stuff online because I always go to that Target. It's the Target that I usually will pick up like groceries and stuff from too throughout this whole quarantine. But I don't really want to go like store hopping for the sake of Christmas ornaments right now. It just doesn't seem necessary. And then the last thing I got is my favorite part of the holidays. The Ghirardelli peppermint bark. I swear I was just talking about these and complaining how they weren't like out in my stores yet but they are now I'm, i need to not eat all of these but these are so good oh so good comment below and let me know what your favorite like holiday seasonal candy or a little treat is because these do it for me all right so now it's almost 11 already i need to get ready to hop on my first zoom call of the day and hopefully get some work done have some productive meetings so i will catch up with you all in a bit I'm back on the floor <laughs> and I'm all zoomed up and zoomed out. I've actually been trying to film some final clips and wrap up this vlog for a minute, but my radiator makes these out of control noises and pretty much is running the show. So I am at the mercy of the radiator in the living room, but we did get some book mail. So I figured I would wait and open it up with all of you. Ugh, so nice. Thank you, Holt. So sweet. We have one more. All right, let's see what we got here. This looks like nonfiction. This is called Broken in the Best Possible Way by Jenny Lawson. It is out in April, and it is, as Jenny Lawson's hundreds of thousands of fans know, she suffers from depression and broken in the best possible way. She explores her experimental treatment of transcranial magnetic stimulation with brutal honesty, but also with brutal humor. Jenny discusses the frustration of dealing with her insurance company in an open letter to my insurance company, which should be an anthem for anyone who's ever had to fight to get a claim covered. I've been fighting with my insurance company to continue covering my birth control without making me change prescriptions for like a month and a half, so I relate to that on so many levels. And she tackles such timelessly debated questions as how do dogs know they have penises? We see how her vacuum cleaner almost set her house on fire, how she was attacked by three bears, business ideas she wants to pitch to Shark Tank, and why she can never go back to the post office. Of course, Jenny's long-suffering husband, Victor, the Ricky to Jenny's Lucille, is present throughout. A treat for Jenny Lawson is for Jenny Lawson's already existing fans and destined to convert new ones, broken as a beacon of hope and a wellspring of laughter. So, nonfiction, memoir, dealing with mental health and life in general. So that sounds like it could be interesting. I'm not a Jenny Lawson fan, but the subject matter does interest me. Next, we have Love Like That. Another art comes out in March. This is by Emma Duffy, Emma Duffy Comparone. And this is about... 
Whether diving into complicated relationships or wrestling with family ties, the girls and women who populate this collection, misfits and misanthropes, bickering sisters, responsible daughters, and unhappy wives don't always find themselves making the best decisions. A woman struggles with a new kind of love triangle when she moves in with a divorced dad. A lonely teenage beach attendant finds uneasy camaraderie with her boss. A high school English teacher gets pushed to her limits when a student plagiarizes. Often caught between desire, duty, guilt, resentment, these characters discover what it means to get lost in love and to do what it takes to find themselves again, utterly singular and wholly unforgettable. Duffy Camperone's stories manage to be slightly wicked, wickedly funny at even their darkest turns and herald the arrival of an exciting new voice in fiction. Uh, so this is an anthology and I love a good anthology. Next we have We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. This cover is really pretty. Synopsis on the inside. Right, wrong, life is lived somewhere in between. Duchess Day Radley is, 13, is a 13 year old self-proclaimed outlaw. Rules are for other people. At school, the kids, the other kids make fun of her. Her clothes are torn, her hair is a mess, but let them throw their sticks because she'll throw stones. Duchess might be a badass, but she's really just trying to survive. She is the fierce protector of her five-year-old brother, Robin. She is the parent to her mother, Star, a single mom incapable of taking care of herself, let alone her two kids. Walk has never left the coastal California town where he and Star grew up. He's the chief of police trying to keep Cape Haven with his beautiful bluffs overlooking the sea. Not only safe, but safe from becoming a cookie cutter tourist destination for the rich. But he's still trying to heal the old wound of having given the testimony that sent his best friend Vincent to prison decades before. He's an, he's an overdrive protecting Duchess and her brother as their mother slides deeper into self-destruction. Now, 30 years later, Vincent is being released, and as soon as he steps one foot back into his childhood town, trouble arrives. It shows up on Walk and Duchess's doorstep, and they'll be unable to do anything but usher it in, arms wide closed. We begin at the end, looks at families, the, one we are, the ones we are born into and the ones we create, Duchess and Walk and everyone they love and whose heart they break, who deserves so much more than life serves them, will sear your heart in this extraordinary novel. So this sounds super heavy. <laughs> this one also comes out in March of 2021. So thank you so much to Holt Books, Henry Holt for these advanced reader copies super appreciate it these seem like they're all going to be very hard hitting and very good i also got another book in the mail yesterday this one came from william morrow books and it's called the heiress the revolution the revelations of on de burrow the french keep finding me um but i love this cover i think it is adorable and i remember getting a press release about this one but i will read the blurb a spellbinding historical novel based on a single mysterious character from Pride and Prejudice that combines the knowing eye of Jane Austen with the eroticism and gothic intrigue. As a fussy baby, Anne de Burrow was prescribed laudanum by her doctor to quiet her, and now the young woman must take the opium-heavy syrup every day. Growing up confined to her father's mansion, Anne had few companions except for her cousins, including Fitzwilliam Darcy, who she is meant to marry, but Darcy does not love Anne or want her. When her father dies unexpectedly, leaving her his vast fortune, Anne has a shocking moment of clarity. What if her life of fragility and illness isn't truly real? What if she could free herself from the medicine that she's been told she can't live without? In a frenzy of desperation, Anne discards her laudanum and flees to her cousin in London, Colonel Fitzwilliam, who helps her through her painful recovery. Gone are her hallucinations and lethargy, now replaced by a keen, unsettling awareness of her own inexperience in the ways of the world. Anne must forge a new identity for herself, learning to navigate high society and heartbreak of forgiven love. The once wan, passive Anne gives way to a braver, more confident woman, leading to a powerful reckoning with the domineering mother determined to control Anne's fortune and her life. The, an extraordinary tale of one woman's liberation, the heiress reveals both the darkness and the light in Austen's world with wit, sensuality, and a deep, compassionate understanding of the human heart. So... A little history, a bit of a period piece. I'm so excited for this. This totally sounds up my alley. And I love the way that it reminds me of the book, um, the YA novel by Nicola Yoon, Everything is Everything, all grown up. Like that one obviously is YA, but it's another one where a woman or a young girl in that case realizes that the illness that's confined her her entire life actually isn't real and that she has the power to take control 
and I think that is a really interesting premise so excited for that one and thank you to the publisher for sending me a copy before I wrap this vlog up I wanted to take a look at my power sheets cultivate what matters power sheets goal planner so you guys know that my planning method of choice is the bullet journal and I do usually like spend some time brainstorming and jotting down what I want my goals and intentions to be in my bullet journal but in 2020 I really didn't like intentionally set goals in a way that I could measure them throughout the year which I don't know if that was for the better or for worse given the outcomes of 2020 but I recently did accomplish one of my biggest goals of 2020 and I'm literally wearing um like eye patch mask right now but I wanted to film this moment because I'm going to check my YouTube stats and I think I should be eligible for monetization now I think I'm not sure I still might be off but I wanted to film either way and I'm not going to be disappointed no matter what happened my stomach just dropped when I said that though so maybe I will Four thousand sixty-eight hours public watch hours. I can't cry with an eye mask on. Okay. I can't believe I did it. Four thousand sixty-eight public watch hours. I am officially eligible to monetize my channel. And as I think forward to 2021, I really just want to be more intentional about my goal setting and working towards achieving things that are going to move me in the right direction especially because you know after the wild and wacky year that we just had i i just want to i'm sure it's like trying to have some kind of semblance of control but also just trying to be as present and active as i can in the new year as possible because i felt like a lot of this year i just had no choice but to be passive and wait for things to happen because i didn't always feel empowered to make them happen given the state of the world so i actually used power sheets back in 2018 i really really liked them there were some things that i like wasn't wowed about but a lot of those things have been adjusted in this newer version so the power sheets planner is essentially a goal tracker it's not like a daily planner you don't write your like everyday to do's or anything like that in here but it really does help you track those big long-term goals Garrett, it would be cool i know tonight i'm honestly a little burnt out i don't think i have it in me to even start like the brainstorming process but i thought it would be cool to flip through the planner and give you guys a peek at what it looks like hopefully you guys can see everything this is a new tripod that i'm filming on and it's all very new to me and my setup is a little precarious but we're doing what we gotta do. So these are the 2021 power sheets. It's the goal planner. And it's like I said, it's really just a planner to help you focus on achieving your goals throughout the year. So I'm just gonna do a quick flip through to show you the highlights of the planner. Okay, so you start, obviously you get this cute cover page. I just love a fresh planner and a fresh paper. So they give you some stickers, nice and colorful, which I probably, quite frankly, won't use. Um, and then your intro page, it says you're ready for a new year. 2020 was a challenging year. Your plans didn't go as planned and your goals changed as you experienced so much uncertainty. In the midst of it all though, do you know what happened? You became stronger, more resilient. You gained the gift of greater perspective. You know more now. You now know more <laughs> now what matters and what don't, what doesn't. You spent your time differently, you adapted, you overcame obstacles and fears in your comfort zone. It defines the word cultivate for you and then it gives you space to just brainstorm your goal ideas. So I've actually started doing this in my bullet journal, just taking notes on like going through old journal entries. What do I want next year to look like? What do I want to actually accomplish? So I'm glad they give you space to just like free write and brainstorm and not feel confined to a format and then it asks you a couple of questions. So this whole front part of the planner is just to help you 
really hone in on your perspectives and decide what you even need to be considering as 2021 goals so comparison isn't just the thief of joy it's the thief of everything and ask you questions about comparison you have like a little profile to fill out ways i'm most encouraged i want to be known for what helps me do my best i feel motivated when how i feel about goals so again super helpful what makes you come alive and it just like is another little open-ended section this is another free area to brainstorm and the title is what fires me up what do you love uncover your unique passions and then it starts to help you get into the more like broken down bare bones let's evaluate life let's think about what we want to do with our lives section so this is the cultivated life evaluation it's broken into eight different sections and they are health friends spouse slash focal relationship family finances work recreation and spiritual or personal growth so you just kind of rate yourself on a scale of one to ten with your level of satisfaction in all of those areas and then it gives you space to also like write out where you are where you'd like to be these are things that you will go back to when you're firming up what your goals are going to be some more reflection the good things what worked in the last year people i'm grateful for challenges lessons learned i just love the way this is set up get ready to break free how many times have you accepted defeat before even trying what have you decided that you cannot do? And it gives you a box to write that. And then who you really are. Imagine the possibilities if you were to break free from your identity box. I'm moving past fear. Fear will try to hold us back from making what matters happen. Name your fears about this about the year ahead. Like, just really good way to frame thinking about your goals. Feel like life is flying by. You blink, another hour, day, years pass. Where is the time going? Check all that apply to you. And then the big picture, imagine yourself many years from now, looking back on the whole of your life, where will you be grateful you spent your time and attention? What will have mattered, what won't have mattered, and who do you wanna be? These are also just really awesome journal prompts. So even after you would fill this out, I would totally continue to put stuff like that in my journal throughout the year. My cultivated year, your legacy starts now. Flip back through pages four through 17 and mark the things that stand out. Review everything you've written so you have it in mind. Close your eyes and envision your most purposeful year yet, then write out a few sentences to describe it. How would you spend your time? With whom will you spend it? How will your days feel? Knowing what matters in the big picture, how can you live like it today? And then a yes and no list. So what you're saying yes to, what you're saying no to in the new year. Some really nice quote pages in here. Um, your best year, so this is kind of like a, like almost like a Mad Libs to fill out what your best year would look like. Based on prompts, it calls out like page numbers from the reflections in the previous pages. And then it just starts to break down how to actually set your goals. It gives you some examples of how to set a big goal versus a mini goal. So I love this. And then it gives you a page to write a rough draft of what you think your 2021 goals are going to be. It recommends choosing between one and eight goals. And then here's the space to kind of firm out those goals again. Um, it even gives you tips on how to color code to track them. And then it gives you space to do a vision board. So if you're a super talented artist, you could sketch here, you can paste things in. I'm all about that. And then if you choose if you want change, choose it and then choose it again. Make a list of a few people possible words that resonate with you so this whole spread is to help you pick your word of the year you guys know i pick a word of the year every year my word for 2020 was unveil and i still don't know what my 2021 word is going to be so i'm excited to go through these pages and really start to flesh that out and then some more i just think that the design is really pretty it's a little bit more busy than i usually go for but it works and so then you start to like break into your like goal setting so it's like this is my first goal here's the yearly goal here's why i picked it the resources you need what your goal aligns with is it a big picture goal is it a yes no list goal it does it align with your word of the year what success looks for looks like for this goal what might happen if i don't make progress on this goal people who will be positively affected by it how will i have fun with this goal along the way and then it also gives you space to write mini goals to help you get to your big goal. So I just love the way this is broken down. You get one of that for eight possible goals, which is the number of goals they recommend you setting for the year between one and eight. And then it helps you to break out your year by quarters. And I 
love this view like just seeing all the corners broken out and this is something where i might go into deep detail in this planner and then make a smaller more condensed version to keep at the front of my bullet journal that way as i'm planning my days my weeks my months i have that to reference there as well and then you start your year so i'll flip through january so you can see how the months are structured so the beginning of the month the first page is called prepare well and it has a section for important to do's things you're excited for things on your mind and things that you're hopeful for and then the next page is a monthly calendar full disclosure i probably will never use these calendars just because i um do all of my planning in my bullet journal but i could totally see myself using the calendar to like write any milestones that i hit during the year and then this is more instruction on how to use the functions in the planner brainstorm your month monthly ideas weekly ideas daily ideas so monthly ideas are big picture action items or projects weekly ideas are things to take action on consistently and daily ideas are habits you want to cultivate and then it gives you a tending list so then you can put up all your monthly action items weekly action items and daily action items and it gives you places to track your progress for each of those things and then at the end of the month you fill out your month in review so people i'm grateful for and why good things this month what i read or listened to favorite memories from the month goals that are going well i'm choosing grace over guilt about and then again something you're saying no to something you're saying yes to and then the next month begin it does also give you the option at the like midpoint in the year so in july to refresh all of your goals and like look back and say oh actually now that we're halfway through the year i need to realign things that were important are no longer important and you can refresh all of your goals however many goals you set so i think this planner is awesome and it's a, obviously a bigger planner than my usual bullet journal notebook. So I like that it can just stay on my desk. I can reference it when I'm working on projects, when I'm taking on work and I need to figure out what aligns with what I really want to do and where I'm going. And yeah, I'm really excited to start brainstorming in this and planning my year in this. And obviously as I start to fill things out, I will give you guys as many peaks as I can and hopefully it encourages you to start planning for your best year yet in 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed this little random day in my life vlog and enjoyed taking a look at the Power Sheets planner. Like I said, when I do start to fill stuff out, obviously it's gonna happen during Vlogmas, so I'll be sure to bring you guys along for my journey of figuring out what my goals are any tips i have for setting goals for the new year i will share those as well and hopefully we can plan to have our best years yet in 2021 we can really only go up from here knock on everything my plan for the rest of the night is to get some reading done if you saw my day eight or not eight <laughs> vlog you know i i posted my december tbr i did start reading last night the green glass house i'm only like 30 pages in so far but it's super cute i'm enjoying it it is like a christmasy wintry middle grade mystery book so something cute fast paced just what i need i finished mary inkmas to you last night and i loved it i gave it like four stars it's really more like four and a half stars and i literally sobbed through the ending of the book not because it's sad nothing sad happens at all but i am just such a mushy emotional little pisces and a christmas romance just does me in every single time thank you all so much for watching i appreciate you so much i'm so proud to have hit my goal of monetizing getting my hours to monetize this channel and i honestly i could not have done that if you guys haven't been watching and supporting and encouraging me throughout this entire youtube portion of my journey as a content creator so i'm grateful for each and every one of you thank you so much for spending your time with me during the day i love making videos and i'm just so glad that you guys seem to be enjoying watching them so thanks so much and i will see you all tomorrow don't forget to subscribe turn notifications on i can't believe we're almost in the double digits of vlogmas like we're almost halfway there i might pull this off i honestly did not think it would happen but here we are and i will see you in tomorrow's vlog be well be safe i know a lot of people across the country are dealing with crazy new pandemic things and yeah just be safe be well take care of yourselves take care of each other love your communities like this is what a year but like i said we're going up in the new year see you guys tomorrow <laughs>